we've talked about briefly, the storyboard is where we're going to be building our user interfaces. So let's take a deeper dive into what the storyboard can do for us and how we can work with it. In this lesson, we're going to talk specifically about some layout issues. So we'll begin by going and finding a label. And we're going to drag it onto our storyboard. And as we drag it, there'll be some guidelines that help us place it. And we'll see that those are handy, but not particularly useful in the long run. So I'm going to drop my label there. And I would also like some other labels. And I'm going to put one halfway down on the left border. And all the way at the bottom. And you can see I'd like this label to hug the bottom. And I'm going to hit each corner. And the middle. And I'm going to do one more. I'm going to get him to be right next to that other label. You could imagine that this would be maybe a text box and an entry field. So we'd have a label for our entry field. But we're just going to use labels. We're going to be talking a lot about text fields and other controls later on. But we're really just concerned about our layout at this point. Okay. So let's give this a run in our simulator. And you can see that I got some of the labels almost in the right area. These two side by side are correct. And this one's not quite in the middle, I don't think. And this guy certainly isn't on the bottom. And I don't have any of the right margin labels. So on the simulator, I'm going to go up to the hardware menu and I'm going to rotate the simulator left. And now we can see what's going on even better. These right margin labels aren't exactly on the right margin. And our center labels are now not vertically centered at all. And the labels on the bottom are completely off the form. So what's happened is that our storyboard has placed the labels in a fixed area. Let me rotate this back. And we'll close that. So I've essentially got absolute dimensions or locations for these labels. And they would happen to work in this square format, but my iPhone 6 is not a square format. People's iPads aren't square formats. iPhone 5s aren't square formats. So this isn't helping me a great deal in laying things out. So we can go to our view controller scene. And on the attributes inspector, there's an area for simulated metrics, and this is just simulated within the storyboard. And I can pick a size, and I'm going to go with an iPhone 4.7 inch. And I can see what happens to my labels. And if I go landscape, that's exactly what I saw. So I can at least simulate this within the storyboard. The problem, of course, is that I don't like what I saw. So we're going to go back to inferred. And now we need to fix this and we need to fix it for all resolutions. So we'll go up to the editor menu and choose the resolve auto layout issues. And we're going to add missing constraints. The basic mechanism of the storyboard is to lay out objects in an absolute way. So essentially I'm saying that this label is 10 pixels down and 10 pixels to the left, and this one is 10 pixels down, but 400 to the right or something like that. But that doesn't work well in the real world when we have different orientations and different resolutions. What we would much prefer is a relative layout. 
If you've done web development or perhaps XAML development, you might be familiar with relative layouts. iOS doesn't truly have the idea of relative layouts, but constraints give us that effect. Constraints can allow us to position controls relative to the view that they're on and relative to other controls. So it does give us the idea of relativity. So when I've allowed the editor to add our missing constraints, it gives me a number of constraints. And as I select them, you can see where they are. You can see the leading margin there and the trailing edge in here. Then we've got one that has a constraint from the bottom for our label. And we're going to match up edges for these labels. So basically we've got a lot of constraints, some of which relate to the form or the view itself and others relate the controls to each other. Now, if I go back to my scene and I change my size back to a 4.7 inch, that's more like it. And if I change the orientation again, much more like it, that's what I'm looking for. I'm going to give this a run. And it behaves just as I would like. And again, just as I would like. Okay, that's great. So now we know everything about layouts, right? But we don't actually want this label here. We want it dead center. So I'm going to put them here. And we have these neat little constraints that pop up. And we're going to run him. And he didn't move. Nope, he's right where he used to be. Well, that's kind of odd, isn't it? So what's actually happened is I still have the constraints attached to that label. And you can actually see a very faint yellow arrow here that tells me I have a little bit of a problem in this layout. So if I click on that yellow arrow, I get a misplaced view. And if I float over that view, you can see it's going to highlight that label that I have centered. And what it's saying is that my X coordinate is expected to be 70 and my Y coordinate is expected to be 28, basically up towards the top left. But my actual is X equal to 312 and Y equal to 177, essentially the centering that you see. So there's a mismatch in what the constraints are saying, which is move it to the top left and what I've actually done in terms of placing in the storyboard. So there's a conflict and when we're running, the constraints are winning, but when we're in the storyboard, we're seeing what we want to see. We want to get those two in line and we want them to be what we want, of course. So if I click on this yellow triangle, it'll give me some options. So the first option is to set the frame canvas to match the constraints. In other words, I have the constraints set up which are going to make this up towards the top left. So if I select this option in my storyboard, that label will no longer show to be centered. It'll follow the constraints that I have already established. Well, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to move away from those constraints. The second option is to update the constraints. So it'll update the constraints to match what I have in the view. Well, that sounds pretty good. So I might try that. So let's give that a shot. But first, let me just talk about this one last option. We can reset to suggested constraints, which is what we did originally that helped everything look good. So we may want to revisit that. You'll find that if you move objects around after you've created constraints, that you'll see lots of these warnings. So you can also apply whatever choice you make to all of the views on your storyboard. So that way you don't have to do them individually. Sometimes if you attempt to do them individually, you start resetting some constraints which affect other constraints and you just end up in this kind of continuous loop circle. So right now we'll just update the constraints 
to fix that misplacement. So now we don't have any layout issues. And we'll just go back and we've got our constraints. And let's see what happens. Well, it's centered vertically, but unfortunately the horizontal centering is not too good. I'm actually laying it out in landscape. So let's see what happens when I do that. Okay, well, that's not great either. Now it's centered horizontally, but not particularly vertically. So the constraints that it added weren't exactly what I was looking for. They weren't relative to the center of the actual scene. They were more of a fixed variety. And you can see the constraints that I've got. They're all relative to other controls. And when I highlight one of these constraints, you can see that it's going to be 250 pixels to the right of this label. And it doesn't matter whether it's in portrait or landscape mode or on an iPad or an iPhone 4. It's going to be 250 pixels. That's not what I'm looking for. That's more of a fixed arrangement. And I want it to be relative to the actual overall view or the entire screen. So I'm a little bit stuck on this. So let me go up to the editor and resolve my auto layout issues. So I'll select the view controller and go up to the editor and resolve my auto layout issues. And I'm going to reset to suggested constraints again. Now you can see that the new suggested constraints deal with the center of the screen. And if I go into my scene, change my orientation, you can see that label stayed dead center. And now let's just check it out on a simulator. He's exactly where I want him. And we'll rotate and exactly where I want him. Great. So there are the issues that you can deal with in terms of positioning things. And the more controls that you put on and the more complex your layouts and the more important that things are relative to each other in terms of position, the more you'll end up working with these kinds of constraints and layout issues. It can be very frustrating if you've not seen what the constraints can actually do for you or to you, depending on perspective. Okay, we'll be continuing with more storyboard topics in our next lesson.